Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. I welcome you all to another Bible study. Amen. I feel I should just get right into it. Because there's no other way to start a Bible study with the Bible study. And I'm going to be doing something slightly different this week. Today, This week's Bible study is going to be more like, not a recap as much as maybe a summary, maybe shedding more light. That's the way I'll phrase it. I'll be shedding more light on Sunday's teaching and also trying to delve deeper into the Bible verses that were used in Sunday's teaching. Hallelujah. Amen. So, as most of you will already know, the topic was the goodness of God, and hence that's going to be carried over and be my main focal point in today's Bible study. Mm. Obviously, like all the other topics we discuss, it's, uh, it's something that you'll see a lot in the Bible, that God is good. In fact, it's one of the key things that we know about God. He's all-powerful, he's all-loving, and we know that our God is a good God, and that's why he's worthy of praise adoration well, that's why we pray to him obviously you wouldn't pray to an evil god so let's get not delay it any further let's get straight into the bible the book of psalms chapter 145 verse 9 It says, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are all over his works. Amen. Amen. You know what, I'll dive deeper into that, but I think the surface message is quite clear. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are all over his works. Like most other Bible studies, let's pray. Let's thank the Lord. Father God in heaven, Amen. we come before you today. We thank you for all that you've done, protecting us, guiding us. And we thank you that as we've just read in the book of Psalms, chapter 145, that you're a good God, you're a good Lord. And I thank you that not just you're good, but you've made sure that all your works as in this world you've created, every Amen. situation and circumstance that we'll ever go through in life, due to your mercy, your goodness will show in all these works, in all these situations Amen. for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. So now, we've prayed. Let's go back to this verse. In fact, I think it's actually important that I prayed first because when you're praying, that's... A, that's how do I phrase it? Christianity is a relationship with God, with Jesus. And what we're reading in the Bible is the word of God. If someone tell, if you heard that someone said something, right? If you've heard that, um, for example, person A was talking about this one topic and you wanted to know more about this topic, who better to ask about it? Who better to talk to about it? Who better to discuss about it than the person right so when we're diving deeper into the, the word of the lord i think it's important that we combine it with prayer that was a, a a small side tangent we'll remember the main focus is on the the goodness of god right so the book of psalms chapter 145 verse 9 um I said this in my prayer, but the main focus of this verse, the main point I want you to take away from it, is not just what God is good, we know this, but God's goodness is unlimited. It's yeah. limitless. It, the Bible says that his tender mercies are, all, are over all of his works. Every single living being, every single thing on this earth has been shown to have God's compassion, his kindness, is evident in their lives and this just shows that god's goodness is this all-encompassing sphere that 
you can't help but get wrapped up in it and you can't help but appreciate the the mercy the it's hard to put it into words this is what when the bible says or this is what it's talking about this sense that you can't just put it into words how great goodness god's goodness is but i feel like i've conveyed this this point so let's let's go further let's talk about something else that came up which is appreciating god for his blessings all right we've just discussed what we just discussed but god's mercies they're limitless they're applicable to every single thing and situation in your lives every single person on this earth all his works all of them there were no exceptions in that verse right yes sir. and yet you see i've been thinking about something recently when we're talking about being grateful for, to god people often just overlook what that really means what this gratitude is because I feel, even if we're not talking about the Bible explicitly, this is something really important, this gratitude. Because are we going to thank God every time we survive a car accident? Are we going to wait for some huge tornado to hit somewhere mm-hmm. before you think to even thank God? Or are you just going to have... Look... In fact, this is something, if you look at, a, even if you go on a smaller scale, right, you think of two people, two humans on that scale, maybe they're in a relationship, one, they, you, and one person says to the other person, something as simple as, I love you, does that person need to give them a, a million pounds or a winning lottery ticket before that person said, I love you to them? No. And yet, even on, on a scale as small as that, how come, how come when it comes to God, we're waiting for some huge uh, catastrophic event to happen that we live through before we're saying we thank God. You see it in the time with so many churches. Mm-hmm. When it's time for testimonies, people are like, oh, I don't really have a testimony because they're waiting for that promotion yeah, or that um, new baby to come back by thanking the Lord for. Mm. But it's really important to just thank god for everything the gift of life Amen. health relationships everything in your life for just providing for us the bible says bible says because think of it you live your life you right now watching this look i'm not going to pretend i know exactly what country you're in there are so many people watching this right yes but the thing is every day right now you're you're eating a meal you're living happily the fact that you're watching this stream means maybe you have access to the internet many other privileges that you have in in your place right and yet you might be worrying about the little things disregarding the goodness and the mercies that god has applied to your life let me just break it down this way. This is not. This wasn't a verse that was used on Sunday, but remember, this is Bible study. What we're doing is studying the Bible, even if it wasn't, you know, explicitly said. We're gonna still bring it back, right? So in the Bible, it's talking about a man being worried, right, of what he has to to eat tomorrow, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then a reference is made to birds, right? Yes. Birds don't worry where they're going to get their next meal, about what's going to happen tomorrow. And think, aren't you much greater than a bird, huh? Yeah. So, so what cause do you have to worry? Just thought I'd branch out to that. Now, really quick, I just want to make a quick segment to somewhere else in the book of Psalms. In fact, Psalms will come up quite a lot. Uh, today just quickly linking to this gratitude for the things God does Psalms 122 is it verse 1 I believe it is yes 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 you'll you'll see this in in a certain song maybe but you've heard before I was glad when they said to me let us go into the house of the Lord So, the book of Psalms, just for context, for historical reasons, it was a book of maybe poems, songs, just giving glory to God, right? And this song, um, it was by David, right? 
this pure excitement to worship. And this, we say, say it all the time. In fact, you might have heard someone talk about it in the way I'm going to all the time. But I want you to really think about it. Really process it in your brain right now. He, he was glad when he said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Have you ever thought about that before? Because you're just thinking, oh, yeah, I'm excited to pray. Oh, yeah, I, you know, the things of the Lord have to be important to you. But have you really re- read what it said? I was glad when they said to me, let, let us go to the, to the house of the Lord. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, how do I think? Young children, right? Maybe their parents will be on the way home and the child will just be like, oh, I really want, I really want a Happy Meal from McDonald's, right? And when they see their parents do that turn in the car and they know that, and the child knows that they're going to McDonald's. Mm. That, the, the ch- you think about it from your perspective. Maybe when, when you were younger, there was something that you really loved doing. And when your parents did it for you, you were just really happy, right? That pure excitement, that pure gladness, if I say it that way. Could you imagine if every single time that you even, that the concept of going to church was brought up, you felt that kind of happiness in your spirit, you felt that kind of feeling of being uplifted. That's just some food for thought, that's just something I want you to dwell on. So let's progress in this goodness of God topic. So then we'll, uh, we'll go to the book of Nahum next. Right, Nahum. Chapter 1, we'll start with chapter 1. Verse 7. Please excuse me, the book of Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7. Just flipped past it, there we go. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. First and foremost, okay, when it says he knows those who trust in him, that's, first, I, I really want you to understand the second part of this verse, because this is something we're going to have to go back to uh, the original, like, maybe maybe if you want to talk about Hebrew or something. But there's a reason in some versions it doesn't use this verb knows. It uses the verb cares, right? And why is that? Because when it's talking about the Lord knowing you, it's more like... It's not like, oh, he's just aware of these people, right? It's like, think of a parent figure, right? And they see something's wrong in the house and they're like, and the sort of thing it is, they don't even need to know which specific child they have that did it because they know their children well enough to, they know their, the contents of their heart, they know their attitudes, and it's also because of their love and care for them, right? So if you think about that way, the Lord knowing you, when it says the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. God's caring for you. God loves you. That's the type of goodness we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, the book of Nahum is here reestablishing the fact that He's your refuge in your times of trouble. He's always there for you. He's a place of comfort for you. In fact, maybe we should maybe we should change it up. Let's let's just go to the New Testament. Book of Mark. The book of Mark chapter 2, sorry, verse 18 to 20. 
think this was referenced in Sunday's teaching, but uh, the verse wasn't explicitly stated, but let's talk about it. Let's read it. The disciples of John, of the Pharisee, were fasting, right? Yes. Then they came and said to him, said to who? To Jesus. To Jesus. Why did the disciples of John and the and why did the disciples of John, right? That's one set, John the Baptist, and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, right? Hmm. Excuse me. But your disciples, Jesus' disciples, do not fast. And this is a valid question, because what we know currently as Christians is about the importance of fasting, right? It's a main it's a key aspect of our relationship with Jesus with and God, right? So what did Jesus say? Pay attention to this. Can the friends of a bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have a bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. And then they will fast in those days. In fact, it's common for people to understand the surface meaning. They're like, oh, Jesus is there with them, so that means they don't even have to currently fast because Jesus' presence is already with them. But why did why is the example of a bridegroom on a wedding day? Why would Jesus use this example? This is where we have to something about the Bible. You have to try and think of the hidden meanings as well, because Jesus always talks in parables, and this is language analysis here. What different words could connote? Why is he compared himself to a bridegroom? Why is he... Look, think of a wedding day. Maybe a wedding day you've been to, maybe your own. Maybe, if, if even if you haven't been to a wedding, just think of what's what that suggests, this happiness, yeah. that sense of love, happiness, passion joy, celebration. And remember what we're talking about, the goodness of God. In Jesus' presence, think back to when I when I was talking about um, Psalms 122 verse 1. When I go to the house of the Lord, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's it. And now we're saying that being in Jesus' presence, right? Being in Jesus' presence is is almost as... It's got the same feeling as being at a wedding. Why? Because in Jesus' presence there's joy and celebration, right? God's goodness is constantly there for us. We've got this constant feeling of happiness. Why? Just being aware of the goodness of God. And that actually ties back. Uh, to something I said earlier, because I know that some people will be thinking, oh, you know, I've been trying, I read my Bible all the time, but I just don't, and I, it's not like I have a problem with it, I just don't feel like I'm overly excited to go to church, I go to church, obviously, but I just, I, I just don't feel that joy, that passion, and the key part of this is to acknowledge the goodness of God, to acknowledge how great the things that God has done for you are, in fact. So let's progress. Let's go to the book of 2 Peter. Chapter 1 verse 3. His divine power has given us. <laughs> As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue Amen. <laughs> or in some versions it will say by glory by his own glory and goodness let's tra let's kind of translate this let's simplify this the divine power of god has given us everything we need for a godly life. Think about that. Because what have I always been saying in all of these Bible studies, in every teaching you've ever heard related to this Christianity, right? You've always heard about doing the right 
doing like good things to get to heaven maybe or or to obey the will of god doing following his commandments right so you're living that life according to jesus christ right following in his footsteps but the bible's here saying that god's power has already given us everything we need for a godly life huh have you ever thought about this god's power has already given us everything we need for a godly life yeah. just by our knowledge of him by his own glory and goodness you don't have to worry you don't have to worry about <clears throat> in fact let's just digest this let's just digest this because you know the correct way to live your life as a good Christian once you just follow Joshua 1 verse 8 when we're talking about meditating on the way of the Lord yes. so that you're able to obey the laws. If you don't know them, you can't obey them. It's as simple as that, right? Yes. And when you're here worrying about all the little details and like, oh, in this part of the Bible, it says we shouldn't eat this. But then later on, it says that, oh, no, don't call anything that I've called cl clean, clean and unclean. Clean. And then here it's talking about uh, what you should wear on your hair in church. But then here it's saying it's fine. And do I stone these people or do I uh, raise my hand for? No, don't worry about that. Because... Once you're follow, once if you're pertaining to the will of God, if you're keeping in, if you're staying in line with what God has put in the Bible, He's given you everything you need for a godly life. The answers are all here. There's no margin for you to worry. There's no margin for you to think, oh wait, no, the Bible can't have an answer to this. I'm struggling in this area, right? So. In fact, I can keep going. Let's keep going. Because obviously, are you tired? No, sir. No. <laughs> Let's get the Romans. Hallelujah. Book of Romans, chapter 8. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. Okay, what things work together? For who? For good. For who? To those who love. Wait, I'm, I'm building up tension here. All things work together for good, right? So every single situation and circumstance in your life will be advantageous to you. No matter what you do, no matter how far you think you've fallen, it will all end up for your good. Yeah. Will it though? Did I say you? Let's see what the Bible says. Yeah. To those who love God. Oh, so for this almost look, people people say, oh, nothing can be perfect. Maybe I, you shouldn't use the word perfect, obviously, but no, I'm gonna say for this perfect way of life. Yes. All we, the Bible is saying you need to do is love God. And also, I don't wanna. I'm not ready for any of you people saying, oh, but what if someone loves God, but then they've also, but they're killing people. No, because if you love God, the Bible says that you love him, you'll follow his commandments. Mm -hmm. So you have to think what it really means to, to love to God. Love God. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So all you need to do is love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Who've been called according to his purpose. What does that mean? Who've been called according to his purpose. What was God's purpose? What was Jesus' purpose when he came down? To put it simply, to heal the world, to to in fact this is more theology, this is more theory, right? We're talking now. But it's important, right? What Jesus did it, in this process these are the technical definitions of terms like salvation and redemption came to restore the bond between god and man 
Because, like, the, the way the theology goes is that, like, obviously, humans, we sin, right? Yes. And Jesus came, and when he died on the cross, he yeah. died for all of our sins, and that, like, yes. reconnected, yes. that reconciled um, God yes. and man, yes. right? That's the process. That's, like, this, yeah. this technical term, like, reconciliation, but don't worry about that, right? Yes. So, if we follow in Jesus' footsteps, because that was the purpose of Jesus, right? We've been called to him. After, when he ascended, he told the disciples to heal the sick, raise the dead. We've been called by him. To what? To love him. And when we love him, everything in our lives, every situation and circumstance will work out for our good. Amen. Amen. Hmm. You see, earlier I said I was going to keep go- keep on going back to the book of Psalms, and I haven't even gone back to the book of Psalms after I said that. Let's go back. Psalms chapter 31, verse 19. I think after this, I'll still, I'll, I'll still give you another verse even after this, because... You can never get enough of the Bible. Psalms chapter 31, verse 19. Remember what I said about the book of Psalms. Collection of poems, songs, just giving glory to God. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you. In fact, real quick, just a quick segment again, quick tangent. Isn't it incredible? Because this is Bible study. We're quite literally studying the Bible, right? Isn't it incredible how you take the book of Psalms written by David yeah. and then you go to, where, where were we uh, talking about um, Romans 8, 28, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And they link up. So your goodness is laid out for all of those that fear you. Mm-hmm. And then you look at something like... To those you know, who love him, love right? Everything. Isn't it incredible how the people who've never met before? It's all these accounts written from two thousand two thousand. In fact, it's more than it, six thousand. Yes. Who knows? Look, researchers, six thousand maybe. That's the statistic, right? But over all these thousands of years, right? Mm-hmm. And all of it lines up. Isn't this incredible? Yes. Which you have laid up for those that fear you. Which you have prepared for those who trust in you. Trust. who Those who have faith in him, I'm saying. In the presence of the sons of men. Anyone who takes... <clears throat> sorry. Anyone who takes reference... Reference? Refuge in God... Anyone who trusts in him, anyone who believes in him, all this goodness is abundant for you in your life. Amen. Amen. And we'll finish up with just one verse to, I like to do this, I like to finish with one verse that can summarize my whole point that I've made, right? So let's go to Lamentations. Book of Lamentations, chapter 3. But you see me turning my pages in my Bible when I have a verse here. But I just like to read it from my Bible for some reason. Maybe you guys can, can relate to that. The feeling of the pages. Maybe it's just a preference. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Hallelujah. In fact, that links back to what I've been saying this whole time. 
even if you're you're worried that oh maybe what i'm doing isn't quite perfect maybe i'm making some mistakes right maybe i didn't quite understand this verse and i'm struggling in this aspect of my relationship with jesus and yet you've got that love for god you've got that hope in him you've got that trust in him he's your refuge he's your shelter Amen. the lord is still good to you his his mercies are still there for all his works mm-hmm. and that's the main point that i'm trying to get across you seek him diligently the bible says you seek and you shall find Mm -hmm. so just to conclude firstly i want to thank you all for listening this isn't for me this isn't this isn't like i'm not the one who's doing this right this is the kingdom of heaven this is a different situation nothing that i can do on earth will even Nothing that I can gain, nothing that any of us can gain, no monetary value. I just want to clarify the importance of the of just following Jesus and mm. setting your life apart from him. Amen. So Amen. of course we've got to we start and we finish with prayer. Thank you, Jesus. So Father God in heaven, Amen. we thank you. We thank you for your abundant goodness, Lord. Lord. We thank you for your mercies that are there for all your works. We thank you for everything you've done in our lives, everything you have done, and everything you will do, Lord. Lord. And maybe for the first time you can say that and back it up with scripture. Lord, we just lay everything down before you. Thank you, Jesus. We want to serve you, Lord. We put our trust in you. Amen. You're our refuge. You're our strong tower, Amen. Lord. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 It's over that prayer. I was just thanking the Lord because that's the kind of mood I'm in, maybe. Maybe it's that joy. Maybe it's that um that kind of happiness like the bridegroom is near me Hallelujah. Hmm. anyway continue to serve the lord with faith and start being more, start showing your gratitude to god i love you all with the love of god love you, in jesus mighty name i pray amen, amen.